Okay, here are the problem. Here is the problem with anti-theism as I see it. Here's my critique of anti-theism, if you will. Going all the way back to Nietzsche. Now, Nietzsche said, God is dead. There are actually two meanings to this. The first, most po the first meaning in the popular imagination is God is dead, i.e., there ain't no God. You know, woohoo, there's not a God. Okay, he did mean that. But the more important meaning, God is dead, meaning religion is over. Religion as an organizing principle of society is kaput. It no longer will be sufficient. It will no longer provide the cohesion. Now, Nietzsche was not saying that is something to celebrate. Matter of fact, he was very troubled by the implications, and he prophesied the nihilism of the 20th century. When you dismantle religion, you are going to have to replace it with something. Something that pro-social, that provides the social co cohesion and the meaning in people's lives that religion provides. Otherwise, you have the problem of the void. And most atheists avoid the void. Yeah, you're avoiding the void. Yeah, you are. You're avoiding it. <laughs> the void. Once again, I say it again. You're avoiding the void. The problem of meaninglessness if you take, remember, nature abhors a vacuum. So if you take religion out of people's lives, people are going to organically produce new and more terrible religions. They are going to get together and they're going to automatically start having new religions that are actually evil. They aren't, you know, kind of, they aren't like Christianity. They got some good points and some bad points. They're pure evil. That's what's going to happen, or that's what Nietzsche prophesied, and to some degree that is what happened in the 20th century. So, here is the problem with the anti-theist case. Two problems. Problem number one. The anti-theist takes it as an article of faith. Yeah, that word, faith. Yeah, you're using faith. Yes, you are. That if you dismantle religion... You take it as an article of faith that something automatically will be re reproduced that is good in its place. You're going to need to provide evidence for that. Because that seems to me, that seems to Jordan Peterson, that seems to like a lot of other people who are, who are trying to think clearly on the subject, that that just isn't a given. You dismantle religion and you are going to need to replace it with something. Because they're pro-social structures are not going to organically appear. They're not. Now, why do you need them? On an individual, problem number two with anti-theism, on an individual basis, you say there is no crisis of meaning because you're only thinking of you, not the collective. In other words, let's take someone like Shannon Q. Shannon Q is an anti-theist. She walked away from her religion. Does she have a crisis of meaning in her life? No, probably not. You talk to her, no. She says no. She's got a lot of things that she finds meaningful and valuable in her life. But she is bringing more resources to the table than your average human being. First of all, she was raised well. You know, she's, she's an intelligent person who's well-educated and she's got inner emotional resources. So you can take religion out of her life and she's going to be just fine. But she's not everybody. Now we go to East Bumblebutt Trump supporter. What happens when you take religion out of his life? And he has no inner resources drawn, no real education. You've taken the thing that gives his life meaning out of his life, and you say, what? You know, he doesn't need anything to replace it with. He could just do like Shannon, make you know, videos about psychology <laughs> using his education. No, what, is he, what are you going to replace it with? Meth? <laughs> I mean, that's really what you're looking at. You're going to replace it with meth. Yeah, he's going to sell meth. You see what I'm saying? It isn't just it, you, the anti-theist, need to think past yourself. Look ahead to the future in society. If you dismantle religion, you're going to have to rebuild it with something that looks suspiciously close to Christianity or works just as effectively and just as good as Christianity in producing pro-social benefits. 
That's what you should really be thinking on. I mean, you take it as an article of faith. There's that word again. That you dismantle religion, you know, everyone's going to be Norway. We're going to be, it's going to be Norway. It's going to be great. First of all, Norway sucks. It sucks. I've been there. No, I've never been there. But it sucks. It's freezing. And all they do is sit around, hate God, and sing Abba songs all day long. All right, Abba's Sweden, but whatever. The analogy holds. Norway isn't that great. And even if it is that great... Every place isn't going to automatically become Norway right away. It just doesn't work like that. If you dismantle, religion is providing a valuable need. It is filling a need in people's lives that is extraordinarily important, arguably essential. That's what Peterson is arguing. That's what I see. That's actually what Adam Frendon sees, too. And he's an atheist. But he's basing that on empirical observation, on sociological study. Religion is, the reason why religion persists and endures is because it is providing something really essential to human beings. And, and part of that is social cohesion and part of that is meaning, something to live for outside of themselves. And you can't just dismantle it and have, you know, automatically utopia in its place. That's the real, that's really what's at issue here. That's what you really need to think about. If you're, you know, if you're an anti-theist and you want a better world, I'm assuming you want to get rid of religion because you want a better world, right? Right? Okay. So, I mean, that's all I'm saying it for now, but that's just food for thought. There you go. I'm in. <laughs>